So when you consume content from the course book, you consume it from uh, topics and project steps and uh, example steps. The rest of the what the course book does is pretty much represented by the choices that you have in the content view menu here. Content uh, content view controls what's in this area. This is the content area of the screen, and nav view contains. Uh, 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 NavView controls in this area, the navigation area, the local navigation area. Before we go into the content menu, let me briefly go over what happens on the home page. The home page obviously comes up when you first start the application. It'll also come up from clicking on the home command on the navigation menu, or in the navigation bar, the global navigation bar, or also clicking on the, um, the icon for the application. First thing that it shows is help that other people have asked for. Um, in this case, uh, this is this is content from a previous class, so it's not um, not relevant to you right now. Um, this person has made two help requests against step one, upload your transform. Here's the first sentence of the help request. What you should do is quickly glance over these every time you come into the course book to see, A, can you help out? And if you can, click on this little arrow and you can um, provide some, some input. But B, is this a question that you might also have? And if so, you should go review it and see if, um, if maybe you want to be part of the help request or if at least it gives you some insight into your own work. Below the open help requests of other people, are listed your own help requests, and this uh, student doesn't have any open at, at the moment, and also closed help requests, and this student doesn't have any closed help requests either. A closed help request is one that's been resolved, and an open one is one that's still being commented on. Uh, notes you have taken, if you have if you created any notes in the application, you can see them all on the home page here. Uh, the only other thing of note here on the home page at the moment is the uh, quick links. My favorite quick link is the one that's la the last visited link that will take you right back to the last piece of content that you consumed in the course book. Let's take a look at what's on the content menu. Course schedule um, details uh, the details the units and modules of the course and has exactly the same content in it that um, this course schedule has. That's on this side of the window. Um, how am I doing is details your progress through the course. Let's take a look at what that, um, what that has on it. Uh, when, when we assess how you're doing, we only use the, the work that's overdue. So at the very beginning of the course, nothing is overdue, and so there's nothing that can be listed in the How Am I Doing page. But once some things have come due, um, then we can assess how well you've done on those things that are overdue. So this first section of the page here, how am I doing, this little summary area, um, gives you an overview of how you're doing. How many points have you earned in all of the um, items that are overdue, the topics and projects and, and exercises that are overdue? So far, this guy has gotten 15 points out of a possible 984. Not doing too well, but since he's the sample guy, I'll, I'll forgive him for that. That yields, uh, oh, excuse me, in addition to the 15 points he's earned from answering questions, he hasn't gotten any bump points. Bump points, as you'll soon see, are uh, bonus points that you can get for various activities in the course. So his total score is 15 plus 0, or 15 points total. That's 1.5% of the total points available. Um, 984 points have passed by this, 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 uh, students, uh, in this student's course book. You'll generally see around 1,000 points that are available to you over the course of the quarter. The average score among this person's peers, on the other hand, is 94%. That's, uh, that's, in my experience, about where people land. The average score is usually in the low to mid-90s. So people do very well on this material. Underneath, uh, underneath the um, summary information is detailed information by every unit and every module. Here's Unit 1, Course and Markup Basis. He's gotten 15 points out of a possible 160 in that unit. In Module 1, Course Introduction, he's gotten 11 points out of a possible 36. In this topic, the course book topic, he's gotten zero points, but there were zero to be had. In introducing the course book, he's gotten zero, but there were two to be had. So he missed a question in this, uh, in this, um, in that topic. So you can see as we scroll through that all of the units and all of the modules are represented here, and you'll see that they're highlighted. When they're highlighted, that means that they're overdue and they're counting against the total. Since this is a course that's already completed, we can go all the way to the bottom and see that everything has been done. All right, that's that's um, that's how am I doing? That's your score. You're kept up to date on the score on the scores of everything that has come due so far in the course. My bumps. 
Um, bumps, as I said, are bonuses. Um, they come in these basic varieties. If you find a bug and that bug results in us changing something in the coursebook application, either a typo or um, application functionality, that's worth some points. Uh, if you help resolve someone else's help request and they feel that you help them out, that's worth some points. If you, uh, if you uh, participate in a class exercise and in that class exercise you're awarded some bump points, those are, those are um, bumps as well. Uh, you can also request a bump for yourself or for some el someone else. Request a bump for someone else if they've seriously helped you. Um, I would choose between one and absolute maximum of three points for bumping someone else. If it's over three points, I may think that it's a little bit excessive. Um, also, if I see that you're bumping the same people over and over again, I may ask you to, um, uh, to hold back on, on awarding so much credit for, for bumping the same person over and over again. Um, I might also ask you to request a bump, so you may make a, a very apt comment or you may do something that I, that I think is very um, bump worthy, and then I would ask you to request a bump. Usually I wouldn't expect you to, uh, to request bumps for yourself without having already um, talked to me about that and, and, and said that it's, and, and have me said that it's a good thing to ask for a bump for. Okay, so this table here tells you about the bumps that um, have been requested for you. Um, the date of the request, who requested it, what the reason was, um, its status, and how many points it was for. The statuses here are pending, approved, or denied. Um, if it's been approved, then those points count against your point total. If it's been denied, then it's water under the bridge and um, it doesn't count at all. If it's pending, then I haven't reviewed it yet. So all bumps, when they start out, become pending so that um, I, uh, to give me a chance to look at them before actually approving them. So you'll see that the points here are in gray, and that shows that this pump has not been yet approved, which is why it didn't show up on my How Am I Doing screen. If you want to request a new, a new bump, you type in the reason here. Um, type in a point value, um, select the person. These are all the people who are taking the course at the same time as you, regardless of which um, option they're in. You suggest that you, um, you uh, choose one of them, and then you choose submit, and that bump will be logged. And um, I'll come through later on and um, most likely accept it or, um, or let you know why I couldn't accept it. Okay, change my user inter information. You've been through this screen before. This is the screen that um, you filled out when you enrolled in the course, and it has your name and your password and your image and all that kind of stuff. Um, once you're enrolled in the class, you can change any of that stuff except your user ID or your username. That username is used throughout the course book, so it can't be changed, but any of the rest of this information can be changed. Course overview and requirements. This shows all the standard sort of logistical information about the course, and it's a good thing to go through at least once um, to see what all of the constraints are about the course, how the grading's done, um, the policies on uh, makeups, and et cetera. Um, finally, questions that have been removed from the course. This one, um, uh, it, over the over the over the over the course, sometimes a question I find or you find usually is. Um, not worded correctly or the answer was incorrectly marked or any of a number of reasons why it's basically a bad question. If it's a bad question, I remove it. And if it's been removed, then it shows up in this screen and you can see all the questions um, here that have been removed from the course. So at the beginning of the course, obviously, no questions have been removed. But over the, cor over the, over the duration of the course, um, there's always a few that um, for some reason just went wrong. All right, so that's how... Um, uh, that's the, the content of the course that's not about um, learning, but really about the logistics of taking the course.